Before we move on and talk about how we do arithmetic to negative numbers, it's going to be useful to have two ideas in hand. The idea of the absolute value of a number and the idea of the opposite of a number. I'm going to draw a number line and draw some numbers on it so that we have something to work with. Okay, so here's a number line, and we're looking at two numbers, one and a half and negative one and a half. Looking at these two numbers, we see that they have something in common. What they have in common is their fundamental one and a halfness, right? They're the same size as each other. They just point in opposite directions. That thing that they have in common, their size, or perhaps you could think of it as their length, that is called their absolute value. To indicate the absolute value of a number, we write the number inside a pair of vertical bars. And when we actually want a numeric value, we use the positive version. So that means those two numbers I have, negative one and a half and one and a half, they have the same absolute value. That absolute value is just one and a half without a sign on it. And when we write a number without a sign, we mean that it's positive. One other thing to be aware of about the absolute value. Because they come in pairs, that's our clue that they probably act as a grouping symbol. And in fact, they do. So that means if I see arithmetic inside an absolute value, I'm going to do that arithmetic first then I'm going to take the absolute value, and then I'm going to do any other arithmetic that's around. Okay, so that's what we need to know about the absolute value. What do we need to know about that opposite directions part? Because they're in opposite directions, these numbers are called, creatively enough, opposites. What do we need to know about opposites? Well, first we need to know how we indicate taking the opposite. So for any number, a negative sign in front of that number just means take its opposite. For clarity, we'll sometimes write the number itself in parentheses. So we could say the opposite of one and a half is negative one and a half. And the opposite of negative one and a half is positive one and a half. Notice that those parentheses aren't really doing any work. They're just holding that number there, making sure that we see that this negative sign is part of this number, for example. Those parentheses around that number aren't doing any work, but they're making what we've written easier to read. So they're just there for clarity, to make what we've written easier to read. Another thing to be acutely aware of about the opposite is when it happens in the order of operations. In order of operations, the opposite happens at the same time as multiplication. So in particular, the opposite comes after exponents. What does that mean? That means that if I write negative 3 squared without parentheses, that means square 3 and then take the opposite. If I write 
negative 3 squared with the negative 3 in parentheses, that's telling me to make it negative before I do the exponent. So that means negative 3 times negative 3. That says make the number negative, then use the exponent. Be aware of this. It's really, really important. What do I mean it's really, really important? I mean you will usually get different answers depending on whether or not the parentheses are there. So make sure that you know whether or not you want the parentheses.